In the last half of the last century, Everett Parker fought for the public interest in the then dominant communications technology. Today, at the beginning of the 21st century, we must transition his fight to the new communications technology. The fight for diversity of viewpoints and the protection of fundamental democratic values has leapt to the internet. The opportunity of the, that the internet offers for making everyone a publisher within, with their own outlet to the world, literally the world, is the greatest advance in democratic values in history. But it only works if the internet remains open. Everett Parker's fight began when a Mississippi television station chose to go dark rather than broadcast information about racial justice. Reverend Parker fought to see that there were consequences to that activity, and that the people's airwaves were not manipulated in such a manner. Today, our challenge is to ensure that the internet remains open to new ideas, new people expressing themselves, and new economic opportunity. The history of networks, whether the railroad, the telegraph, or the telephone, has been one where incredible opportunity presented to society has been tempered by the reality of economic opportunism. Everett Parker fought for the free flow of information without economic obstruction. In his time, it was necessary to own a broadcast license or to buy ink in 50-gallon barrels for your newspaper in order to have a conduit for such widespread expression. Today, you just need an internet connection. And that connection must be able to lead you and your opinions to the world, as well as to bring the thoughts and ideas of the world to you, both without interference. Free, express, free expression on the basis, is the basis on which our democracy is constructed. We have learned that financial interests can undervalue the importance of speech, but we will not. We will recognize the importance of the speaker, and just as important, we will recognize the importance of the listener to receive information. Democracy cannot work if political expression is cabined or confined. The history of America is the history of unpopular ideas that came to be recognized as essential truths, from the independence of the colonies, to the abolition of slavery, to the simple notion that people should not be judged on the basis of race, ethnicity, or sexual orientation. This is why free expression is a value that stands at the center of our work to promote an open internet. As if the revolutionary expansion of free speech represented by the internet wasn't enough, the net is also an unprecedented expansion of economic opportunity for everyone. Networks have always been the backbone of economic expansion. But what's new this time is that an open internet allows innovative activity to reach scope and scale at an unprecedented pace. That a guy and a gal and a dog in a garage can suddenly reach scale overnight and should not be stopped from that ability. These are the fundamental reasons why we're considering an open internet rule at the FCC. Some have remarked that this may be the most important decision that we make in my term. I don't know whether that's true or not, but
but I can assure you I'm treating it that way. Everett Parker was motivated by a dream that the principal means of communications in this country should serve everybody, regardless of the color of their skin or the size of their paycheck. His work continues today, and it's in that spirit that I'm proud to be here with you this morning and to receive this recognition. Thank you very much.